Welcome back to our conversation about public transit with the executive director of the MBTA Advisory Board, Brian Kane. So, Brian, we were just before the break talking about the financial uh, problems of the system. Individuals, many individuals, are struggling with uh, the economy today, with the cost of living here in this area. Next month, the T Board of Directors will vote on a proposed uh, discount of about 50% mm -hmm. on fares for lower income riders. That means individuals making 30 grand or less, yes. uh, families making 62,000 or less. What's the potential impact of that on the T's deficits? I mean, can the T afford to do that, in your view? Well, there's no funding source or, um, dedicated for it in the long term. Governor Healy has put $45 million in her budget. Just because it's in the governor's budget doesn't mean it's going to actually pass. The legislature has to do what they do. Uh, but there's no money in year two. And the cost for this program rise to about $100 million after five years. So it is a it is a large concern for for my organization, the cities and towns that contribute money to the T, and uh, and it's it, it's a big concern for a lot of folks. At the same time, um, I wish we lived in a society where low income folks had more access to move around the region. It has to be paid for though. So this is another one of those decisions where we have to sort of put our wallet where our hearts are. Well, you know, a big cost center for the T is uh, uh, union contracts, and there are some generous yes. new ones that are, are kicking in here. Uh, I noted this uh, past week that uh, Senator Mark Pacheco of Taunton has announced he's not going to seek another term. And, of course, he is most known for the Pacheco Law, yes. a 1993 state law that essentially made it virtually impossible to privatize a public service that mm -hmm. is uh, currently operated by union members. Yes. Uh, you were at the T after the Snowmageddon winter of 2015, when the Pacheco Law was suspended for three years to allow for some privatization initiatives at the T, and, and uh, the MBTA claimed it saved $400 million. Should the law be suspended again? I, I, I highly doubt the $400 million number. Um, okay. I don't think there's any logic or value to that at all. Okay. Um, the Inspector General has begun uh, detailed investigations on almost all of the contracts that were were let under the Pacheco suspension, um, block by block, um, police dispatch contracts. Uh, I'm not sure that there is a lot of positive to be said about the way it was handled. Um, I also doubt that they saved any money, frankly. Um, because of prevailing wage laws in Massachusetts, you basically have to pay somebody else the same amount of money. Um, so no, I don't think it should be suspended. I think it certainly needs a relook and a rehash. I'm not saying that the current union members at the T should do what they do the same way forever, but I don't think suspending Pacheco wholesale really did much. I think we need to take a really deeper and harder look at that. It helped fix the money room problem, right? The money room. I loved the money room. Um, the, the room where employees had to wear special clothing with no pockets so that money didn't disappear. And we're sleeping uh, on tables surrounded by piles of cash. What about the warehouse operation where uh, uh, supposedly uh, the time, the inordinate amount of time it took to get parts out to a repair job somewhere within the system was dramatically cut by privatization? Why for the opposite? Uh, the hmm. fact that they move the warehouse, I think it's in Norwood or somewhere further out away from the inner core where the subways and buses run mostly, uh, has added to time. But I haven't looked at this stuff in a few years. I did work on it, you're right, when I was inside at the T, uh, 2017, 2016. Uh, a lot of other systems do it. It's not something that should be taken off the table completely. Uh, but I just don't think heretofore we've seen a lot of savings from it. We're just about out of time here, but just briefly, uh, you, as part of your job, have to be aware of public attitudes toward the T. Yes. How would you characterize the current state of play of public perception of the MBTA? I think people are optimistic that the new general manager and his team are trying to do the right thing, reducing slow zones especially, but people are still frustrated. They still just want to get where they have to go reliably, safely, frequently, and efficiently, and we're still not there yet. 
even though it's been a long time since we've had a big snowstorm around here. No, not this year yet, knock yeah. on wood. Yeah. I hope it stays that way. Brian, thank you. Thank you, John. Appreciate, Appreciate you coming by here.